Welcome everybody to the Monday, May 2nd meeting of the Conway Select Board and at 6.05 6 will be the joint meeting of the Conway Select Board and the Conway Finance Committee. Uh, call the meeting to order. The first item on the agenda is approving the minutes of April 19th, 2022. Everybody get a chance to look at them? That's great. Yep. I move to approve. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 It's unanimous. No warrants today. Meetings attended by select board members. Erica. I was at the Hercog meeting on Thursday. That's right. Oh, thank you for going. Yes, thank you for going. It was fine. I don't know why. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, so they had they uh, the the bulk of it was a presentation by um, a, a consultant group that they'd hired basically to do kind of like a post pandemic assessment of how the Hercog handled um, you know the public health crisis. Um, and I, I think Phoebe sent me the attachments to that. There was a whole PowerPoint. It was it was really interesting, and I thought it was very. Um, I thought they did a good job. They weren't like you know, it wasn't like a victory lap. It was <laughs> it was a pretty honest assessment um, of of the FERCOD and some of the limitations just that that organization has um, in a situation that no one had ever you know no one had ever faced anything like that before. So um, yeah, so that was my meeting last week. Good, not for me. Um, well, I did. I went on the uh, forest walk for the Forest and Trails Committee, and we had a meeting. Oh, and I had a meeting with the pool committee to discuss the emergency action plan and plans for this year. Um, public comments. We do have members of the public here who wish to make public comments. So thank you for coming. Thank you. Thank and, you. And. Um, I'm Phil Cantor, and this year's chair of the Conway Select Board is Bob Armstrong and Eric Goldman and Veronica Blanchard. Um, but we don't know all your names. But you don't. So, so would you like to make a comment? And yeah. Let us sure. know who you are. And of where? course. We were, we we're a uh, family. Uh, we lived in Williamsburg. I uh, hated all, actually. Just uh, a mountain street. Just, uh, and uh, but we also uh, work um, in sustainability with municipalities. So our business is called Local Power. I'm Paul Fenn. I'm Jamie Peters. I'm his wife, but I also run Local Power. I'm George Fenn. <laughs> so you're a company, Local Power? Yeah. Yeah. And and uh, we work like, you know, we work, with, well, we work a lot in, in energy with municipalities. In fact, developed the uh, maybe to its aggregation program in Massachusetts. You, I believe, have a CCA here. Yeah, I wrote oh, a lot. Colonial. Yeah, you colonial. Yeah. We have about 13 towns that we all buy our CCA. Yeah, right. We're not here about that. We also work with municipalities on, on general sustainability. And so we've actually taken on a whole new project because we realized that there was a pretty serious problem here in Massachusetts uh, around waste management. And uh, that it's getting a problem that's really getting quite a bit worse. So, I mean, well, we should just start where we live, you know. And so, we're going to our towns, towns right around here to start talking about the right people, you know, that are concerned with policies. Um, to, to, mostly it's the kitchen waste, start talking about not recycling, but the non recycling kitchen waste. Oh, is, by residents. Yeah, which is uh, the third largest cause of greenhouse gas emissions. Uh, is pretty much universally uh, shipped away in Massachusetts to other places. Uh, in those places, it's mostly incinerator landfill. Those are low-income communities and informally. So we saw it and thought, wow, we'll um, sustainability with all these communities like Amherst and Northampton and Cambridge, Mass, and Ithaca, New York. Those are kind of our plant types. And they don't have garbage policies. And just, I don't think it's on anyone's radar. But now you've got the PFA crisis happening. And, and sometimes we become aware of that crisis and how profound it is and how ubiquitous the contamination is from it. Not um, in Conway. Not, that, not, we were part of the statewide yeah. sampling of communities, statistical sampling of a small number of communities yeah. to determine the statewide extent of that. And we officially came up clean. Yeah, we. it, it helps that our fire department, that, that stuff as a firefighting foam is so expensive. Okay. That our fire department estimates its 50 year use as being one five gallon bucket full. <laughs> and, and, and our uh, industrial 
activity was all pre all of those chemicals. You, you know, yeah, the, right. the leather factories and things that we had here, you know, before the Civil War are you know, old enough that they, they didn't they didn't make any of those chemicals. Right, right, right. So yeah, and our, our town also, as far as I know, is is, is clean locally, but I also know that our garbage is all going to spring. And we've learned, I didn't really realize this until the last year, that those waste streams are full of PFAs, that the kitchen waste now is full of PFAs. Mm -hmm. Container products, clothing, it's ubiquitous. So everything that's going on train center communities is PFA contaminated for those communities. Uh, that's why we're trying to deal with it. We're saying, okay. So we were talking here. about well water, really, not well water. Yeah. You, so you heard about, uh, uh, yeah, yeah, right. Uh, so what's been happening in a lot of the uh, cities around the state, the, the worst case mm -hmm. in Maine is uh, that they're running the wastewater runoff through the wastewater treatment plants. And those plants don't do anything to the they just go right through the system. So, uh, and then a, a lot of states have been putting that, that uh, biochar from, from those farms. And we have this main farm contamination. I didn't think about that. It's a really, really big deal. Yeah. It's the whole state. I'm going to stop taking your time, but I just want to start the conversation, introduce ourselves. We're, still, we're not asking anything tonight. We did talk to some folks on the health board. We talked to PERCOG. Everyone basically said you should talk to the select board. It is a local policy issue. Uh, but we'd like to somehow carry on a conversation, you know, if, if, as the time affords for you, as your schedule for you, if there's interest, uh, because we're thinking of we developed aggregation of the preview of colonial. We're thinking of aggregating waste services in a way to try to improve the disposition of these wastes so that they aren't sent to Springfield, this field, and upstate New York, and Canada, which is the most of the spread now. In, in a way that differentiates you from Perkhoff or some of the ones that are currently doing something kind of sort of similar to that. They are, yeah, they, they are. Um, we're, we're not trying to compete with Perkhoff. No, it's worth competing with their very inefficient users. Well, maybe we would have to. Yeah. Yeah. We're, not, we're, no, we're, no. we're not trying to form a garden business, but we have. Yeah, many, of our, many of our towns look to Burkhock to, to handle our waste. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know, we all, uh, they, they. You mean, you mean Franklin County saw this management? Yes. Right. Yes. Right, right. Yes. Is that run by Burkhock? No. Oh, no. Okay. No. Okay. No. That's right. It's always been in the district. Mm -hmm. And we talked to the staff there, and they were completely uninterested. So. The, the, the the, 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 there are a variety of different ways to treat waste. We're trying to basically uh, organize a partnership with companies that can treat the waste without emissions, that sequester the char, the char into products, um, and that convert the hydrocarbons into, into hydrogen fuel. Uh, and so that's pretty much what we're trying to do on the on the service side, because we're we're not a service provider. But we help municipalities acquire services from service providers. So that we, we're just thinking, let's you know, put something together. There could be, if there were towns that were interested in this uh, around here, like we're trying to get Williamsburg, we're trying to get Whaley, we're trying to get all this right here. We're not going all over the building. Just right around here, see if there would be interest. And um, we would do the, the, the sort of, uh, I guess, the, the, the sweat equity to, to, to pull together if there's an interest. And to just go down that path and see if there's a way to do it. Uh, we have found some really promising companies. We're not totally settled on them. Uh, one is a, a, a waste hydrogen company. It's an illustration. We're looking for a really good PFA solution because really there, there are four solutions. Most PFA that are recycled into, into gardening products. Just like, how do we thought of that one? You know? And so the, down in, uh, uh, in uh, uh, there's a down by Fall River, a ton. They've got a plant there they're about to put on land and they're going to be making farm. And so they claim by heating, heating it up that it gets rid of the PFAs, but why do they make PFA waste in farm? You know, they just don't get it. So we, we think there's some room there that's kind of set a better standard where it's actually done as well as it can be done, you know, with transparency. And I think it's good. It would be a big lift to very many towns to move away from Franklin County Solid Waste Management. I uh, I, I, you know, and it doesn't sound like you're here saying we, we the select board, should be putting pressure on them to do that. Um, I mean, which 
which feels feels to me like an easier list if that that's that maybe that, I'm not sure why they ignored you. Uh, but that may be well, I think it's so it's so loaded because the the um there is a long frustrated like Julia worked on big green in the 90s. He was the very involved with purge. We know the purge people are very involved with the purge people, clean water action. The people that are leading the policy at the state level are really 1990s throwaway regions, in my view. They're still talking about plastic bans, and we're in the biggest plastic boom of all time right now. And it's, a, it's an insane volume of plastic. Potentially incinerating plastic. They're trying to it's just seeing the plastic. How much it's growing at the same time that their policy path is don't do anything better with kitchen waste because it'll create a market for plastic. And but but if you look at the, the landfills that, that, that are out there as PFA sources, it isn't just a plastic problem, it's a public health problem now. That because the FDA and the, and the EPA won't ban products from the waste stream, they will not ban them. And there is not a significant political campaign against the question of ban. This is not happening. So the same groups that say don't uh, use pyrolysis to convert waste to hydrogen, even with sequestration, I don't think they would say you just you smoke the crack uh, because this is a acute crisis as comparable to climate change. We're very focused on climate change, but it is comparable to climate change magnitude, and it's a public direct public health threat to us. So you have Black Lives Matter signs everywhere in Western Mass. All of those people are sending their garbage to Black people. That's what they're doing to be incinerated and breathing really well. And so it's just it's incoherent. And and looking at thinking and Pittsfield is somebody should do something. Incinerator in Pittsfield had a lot of um, violations. And so sure. So we look at all the addressable forms of carbon, waste being one, and we sort of fell into this hole. And all, the more we researched, the more we thought, you know. So the, I mean, essentially what we'd like to do is we're making select board um Presentations. This is public comment. I'm way over. Mm -hmm. So no, we'd like to, if possible, schedule the formal presentation that shows you exactly what this program would look like. And the endpoint may be to send a letter to, you know, Franklin County or you know, to to consider a presentation and think about some of mm -hmm. this. And it could be maybe that's the sort of the. They said we're not interested in talking to the town. Yeah. And so we we'll do that said, yeah. We I, I welcome the you city. Know, we're always open minded to see if there's. Way for us to build Our towns are still reeling from uh, solid, you know, waste streams as instead of being profitable, you know, to being really expensive. Yeah. And, yeah. and, and I um, suspect this would be more expensive. No, um, actually, because it's not. That would be great. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll yeah. present it. We can present yeah. it. Yeah. Yeah. One, one yeah. of the things that, you know, from one of the benefits to the towns of the Franklin County, the solid waste district is the you know, we're in a contractual relationship with them and that affords an amount of predictability. And, yeah. Uh, yeah. and so when your only source of raising revenue is assessing your residents on their tax bill, it's really important that like what we do be perceived as sort of not a gamble. Yeah. Um, yes. And that, yeah. and that it has, um, you know, we know, Absolutely. we know where it's yeah. going yeah. and we're not getting into something that, um, we don't know what it might cost when right. we're halfway through it. Yeah. Um, so we can answer those questions. Is, is the best way to set up a presentation to call after or leave? Um, to, it would be to, so it, yeah, they, right. the, the town administrator is running on the answer to it. So um, okay. it would so be a call there. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Right. Great. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for giving us some time. I'm so proud of you now to get there. I'm finding a garbage hall or the wall art. I know. Uh, oh, for compost. Right, yeah. We have compost, and people in town love bringing their garbage down for compost. <laughs> yeah, but right. the, 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 the hauler who was hauling the compost away, and they wouldn't do it anymore. Is that right? And you can't find something. That's crazy. You could have just gotten in touch with Bill O'Bear. It's, it's the hauling. It's the hauling. Yeah. Hauling. It's, yeah. Yeah, no, yeah, that's so part of the fuel cost thing is yes, modular. Yeah. So you basically, if you had six towns your size, you could pick one of the transfer stations, put a container in it. It's a shipping container. It's on the side of the container. So anyway, we'll, we'll tell you about it later. Thank yeah. you so much. But it's interesting. We do have, you know, we have those different containers where we put things today. And so you could identify things that have PFAS in them in significant amounts and put them in their own container. And then, but the well, idea. this process, I, anyway, I'll give yeah, yeah. you a presentation because there's really two components. 
One is 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 sequestered biochar, and this company there are two companies. One of them converts to hydrogen with really good, super ultra low emissions, way way below. The other one does sequestration mm -hmm. into limestone. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to so the carbon carbon So there's another point the so so it's quite interesting and very quite sustainable from our point of view, very sustainable looking. Um, but then yeah, the PFA side, that's, that's where we're really trying to get clarity from them. The, the claim of, of confidence does the conversion says that um, the temperatures that they reach will destroy the footprint. I'm yes, still not so quite I, satisfied with that. Uh, actually, I just want to make sure I don't, I don't like the answer sounded too simple. Yeah, uh, maybe it does. I hear it refers to the uh, where the forever chemical, yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah. so 1800 degrees, they say, we're not yeah. trying to like anyway, we just want to find it. I said, you know, try to put it together and, and, and then close that, put some towns together, put some suppliers together, see if something like that. Great, so. Thanks a lot. Thank you very much. Thanks. Good night. Good night. We have uh, Rihanna coming on in three minutes. And Roy is still with us. I'm here. Thank you. Um, I guess uh, we can talk about the helicopter sawing, <laughs> and which is so. The, um, I became aware that it was Sunday when uh, I was asked if, if you could come to Eversource to, uh, to to let the, to let so, so that we would know when exactly the hell because it was. Um, I guess the police chief saw it early Sunday morning, and it was so. They were flying right over. They, my, he, he, he said it was so house. incredible. Everybody needs to see this. Yeah. Amazing. Yeah. Um, so, so it, it's going to be going on for till the end. Of course, and I'd like to. We are we get a small amount of credit because calling them in. I don't know. Not the cheapest option. Um, and and maybe they just didn't want to spray it. It's not worth having, getting hauled into the select board or live on camera anymore. But um, um, the. the it's two people. So that 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 the, the pilot just plots GPS and, and and like works the keyboard and just goes the little waypoints, and um and that's how they're able to do it. And really, they were they were doing it in twenty mile gusts winds. And I thought, wow. right next to a tree, I, I thought, um and and there's this long long cable and a box at the end, and there's a saw operator next to the pilot, and um when they turn the cable on, there's these blades eight blades that come out from the bottom of the big drum and thing. And it goes really fast and it hits a tree and bounces off and it goes back and it's quite the spectacle. So, um, and, but a lot of people were like, well, there's these helicopters, which flying so low, what are they doing? <laughs> Noisy. So that's what it is. And we're very glad that they were flying between Pine Hill Road, basically, and the Sportsman's Club. Yeah. That, that yeah. clearing up there. And they were widening the clearing. Uh -huh. And, and, uh, and I hear something. Yeah. It's like it was hard to know. Yeah. That was, that's, um, you know, they could trim trees by the helicopter, <laughs> let alone in strong, gusty winds. Yeah. Um, we have a quorum in two minutes. So do we, do we have mail here? Can we talk about the mail? I, I don't know what we want. I'm fine with the mail. That's pretty efficient. What is the post-emergent herbicide application I mail? Um, yeah, did you? Okay. It came here. It's on my phone. <laughs> so, and we have the response uh, letter. That was, I think you had already seen this. So, it was just approving you signing it. This really the invasive species. Um, this is the railroad saying they're going to be spraying Roundup. And where exactly does the rail line go into? Oh, I guess that's, be that's between Bartles Ferry Bridge. And um, the railroad bridge right 
west of Bardwell's Ferry Bridge, and then where that goes before it goes into Shelburne Falls, that's Conway. And that's right so after they will be spreading. Time. They will be spraying Roundup by low pressure sp spray application by a railroad truck mounted spraying device. Mm. The train itself will spray herbicide. The window is like three months too. I assume they're not going to be spraying for three months. That's just there. I'd be curious to know how. Right. That's you know, yeah, yeah. It's during that window. Right. But to get to know you spray for three days or five days or and um, you know, Roundup is not approved for wetland applications. It's strictly dry land, which a bunch of their stuff is right along the water. Um, maybe we should respond with the request for further information. Well, if you, yeah, the next is a yeah. letter from you doing the stat. Oh, yes. <laughs> there, that's my standard letter to utilities. Uh, yeah, so the, the proposal here is that we respond with our traditional letter, like we gave to Eversource the first time, except without the insults that we reserved exclusively for Eversource. Um, so they don't have to go through the Conservation Commission? They have some kind of... Yeah, rail, railroad law is arcane and long, long pre-existed the town's uh, commissions. So the Comic Select Board requests you or a representative uh, come to a select board meeting so the town have insurances that uh, what you're you know, that, that you'll be following best practices and that you'll be available to answer about questions about the proposed work. Okay with everybody? That's fine with me. All right. See you on the meeting. So whatever the email is signing. So I think is that a motion. <laughs> sure. We move to approve the Proposed letter to Pan Am's representative Keith Morris requesting that Pan Am Railroad send a representative to the Conway Select Board to explain their spraying plans and answer questions. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Thanks. We have a quorum. The finance committee has a quorum. Yay. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Hi, how are you? Hi. I call the, I call the finance committee meeting to order. Join the select board. So um, there were just minor changes. I did not I did speak with um, Attorney McNichol earlier today. There were just some minor changes couple places where I hadn't put in will vote to kind of thing but so the main one hopefully everybody has seen it was the change in article two to line 330a which just added in more for the tuition and that's literally the only um, substantial change when the community preservation committee met last week they did make a change to Article 29C, and that was just that they added, instead of $7,000 for the um, uh, tree work at Howland, it was 21. And that's, those are literally the only changes. One thing I did wanna point out, because as you can see the the percentage change is now 3.71%, but if you look at the total of our operating budget, the change is only 17,735. And I put another sheet there that says all codes. And if you look at the bottom, I put down what the colas would be depending upon the percentage. And look, 25,000 is what it would have cost for a 3% cola, but we're only 17735 over. So clearly our operating budget went down yeah. by you know, a fair bit. So I just wanted to point that thanks out. To, <laughs> thanks to the amount that you saved the town over your predecessor, basically. Yeah, that's, <laughs> that's pretty much it. And that is the actual amount, actually. <laughs> yeah. um, so you get to you get to you get to take a bow on that one. But you know the this. Yeah. So if we if we wanted to 
keep the total under 3.5, what what would a slight reduction in the amount that we're putting into a couple of the stabilization funds do for us? Nothing, because that's not in an operating You would have to cut something. I mean, we can't cut the schools. So, and that's where it really is. So what I'm saying is in our operating budget, we're already down $8,000. I don't know that we could cut much more, but, um, and, um, yeah. So as we start to talk to the warrant, let's let's um, can we entertain a motion first to vote to reopen the warrant? <laughs> I'll second that. All in favor? Okay. So the, the, you guys have to do the same? I don't know. Maybe no, maybe no. The vote. Uh, no, the, no. Your so warrant. the warrant. Oh, the warrant, warrant is warrant. now okay. reopened to discuss. Okay. We've um, just talked about two of them. Yeah. yeah. So if we want, if we wanted to, to, to lower lower the overall, what would be your suggestions, be, Brian? I, I what, literally what would the have no, what would your options be? I, I I can't even think of any. To be honest with you, I mean, somebody have gone down. Um. Yeah, I mean, we're not going to cut the schools. They're they're like two hundred thousand dollars of, of the two forty four increase. Mm -hmm. Pretty, maybe more than that. More than that. Mm -hmm. We're still projecting 125,000 new growth. So it still isn't much. So. Three point seven is a tough number. It will be a bitter pill to swallow for some. So you're talking about lowering it by about 0.2 percent, which I think is lowering it by about 13. A little more than thirteen thousand dollars. Yeah. And that's just just from just from the operating part. Correct. <laughs> yeah. I mean, in, in looking at this, the one that's the biggest unknown for me is the transfer station, but we just had the increases in cost for trash and, you know, and hauling. So I'm, I'm a little... The, 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 when I was looking at this, the one thing that I was thinking about is, you know, we're, we hired a building maintenance person, but the, that person is 20 hours per week, but and yet on, the, on our warrant, it's for a full-time position. And that... Um, for a while, it's for, a, for a while, yeah, yeah. So, so for a while, it doesn't need to be this much. One would think that we'd be safe taking thirteen thousand out of that line. So when we look at the, the beginning of all of these operating budgets all the way down, eventually you say total is 17,000. That's the, the change, increase. the total change. The total change, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so the whole budget is, uh, for operating is 2,000, sorry, 2 million, yeah. 670,760. Which is an infinitesimal level of growth from the previous year really is. Exactly. So um, cutting it is where <laughs> I don't know where to cut. Be, yeah, but three point seven. Yeah. Well, the fact we do grow up with one hundred twenty-five thousand, we're talking about increase about 
between 40 and 50 cents per thousand on a property tax bill. Given, given inflation as it is. So what's the percent increase on the property tax? I would estimate between 40 and 50 cents per thousand. And that's assuming new growth of 125 million, yeah, which yeah. Lee says is a bare bones minimum projection. So that's yeah. that's way less than one percent. Right? I mean one percent yeah. is one dollar on a thousand. So this, so it's a that's a half a percent. That feels pretty good to me. Yeah. yeah. It, everything about this budget is good except for the final number. That's not good. Yeah, well it's, it's not good. Beyond our control. It, you know, and it's not a permanent increase. You, you know, we had a we had a big increase because of the you know more kids going to the Smith School and big increase more kids going to the Tech School. You know, Tech School. Yeah, yeah. Tech School is and, and they year. they fluctuate every year. I can't you know I can't imagine that we need to jerk around the rest of the rest of our budgets to make up for that. Well, I'm, well, I mean, I'm, I'm not suggesting we jerk anything around. Well, um, but it's your uh, But you know, when 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 you're when you're budgeted for a full time employee and you're not getting a, you're not getting a full time employee, then the budget should reflect that fact. That's all. Because well, uh, you could say, you know, we're not actually going to spend that money. So we could change it now, or but it just becomes free cash. Yeah, that's not, you know, that to, to raise and assess money from people that for free cash is not uh, a popular idea in the history of town government. Um, Roy and Rihanna, have you any questions, suggestions about Article Two? I, I don't have any. I was going to say, uh, um, how many votes? I mean, dollars. How many? How much money are we trying to find? Thirteen thousand. Yeah, thirteen thousand dollars. <laughs> it's almost twelve thousand seven hundred and eighty. Oops, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, I mean, what are we talking about here? You, uh, you know, you you can't you can't you can't uh, get blood from stone. And I do want to remind. Well, never mind. I'm not going to remind anything. <laughs> it's uh, and that would make it drop below three point five. Is that what I'm what I was right. hearing? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Well, I recognize that it's like you know to to make a budget for to achieve an arbitrary number is in and of itself ethically questionable maybe. Um, but um, I also recognize that a 3.7 is going to be met with resistance from at least some people. Mm -hmm. Like it will, that's just- So what are they gonna vote okay. down? Yeah, that, that, that's what you don't know how that gets expressed. Mm -hmm. That's the problem. Can we stockpile a little less sand and salt? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's one one area so, that we could look. So, do you, what would the amount be that we could cut safely cut from the highway budget to make up for the fact that the person we've just hired is not going to be starting right away? Well, he started today. Oh, okay. But, <laughs> but today. he started today but, but at, 20, at twenty hours. But, but only. Have for high till January, right? No, till July first. Yes, that was. I mean, that's fair enough. And this is the July first budget. Mm -hmm. So, mm. um, oh, I, I, I'm serious. Can't we? Um, the winter roads is something that we can kind of take if we need come next winter. 
And is there something that can be, um, you know, reduced from there? Because Winter Roads is the one budget that um, can be You're overspent. Right. And right. the truth is, you may not need to overspend it. But where's the yeah. snow and ice? Yeah, that's yeah. the yeah. 423. That's Winter Roads. Yeah. But that's only $8,000. No, no, it's 103000 It's been flat. So we'd be giving him, what, $90,000? Mm -hmm. Oh. Yeah, but understand, he can always, if he needs more, there'll be more for him. Um, it just, uh, you know, Winter Roads is always usually, um, usually a little bit left, isn't there? Except for those weird years where there's not. Yeah, we've been lucky the past two, the two years. I mean, what are we projecting as our free cash based on our article, mm -hmm. not our money, our, our money, not left. Not our money, our um, 12,000. It's yeah. 13 something, 13, like 13.7 yeah. left over in free know. cash. You, but you can't, you can't take free cash to, to uh, no. cover operating. I, uh, I, don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't encourage stripping back the uh, snow and ice money. I'll be honest, I was just so impressed that all the members came in so low yes. <laughs> already yeah, for the operating budget. <laughs> um, I mean, if you want to trim it off the transfer station and that's the bus route can go up though. Yes, I, I, I don't. Um, uh, there's a lot of unknown. I have $20,000 in here for fees to the MRF. Because I just simply don't know, yeah. and we're still getting revenue right now, but it goes up and down and up and down. Mm -hmm. and I, but we could trim thirteen thousand off of that. Let's and, do that, and then we could Let's see if we need it. That's what I want to do. Okay. How much uh, do we know when this? Well, I guess we don't know when this uh, fiscal year ends. Uh, how much uh, we're going to need to move out of the reserve fund? Any any clue, Alan? Well, we have forty thousand dollars that we uh, earmarked. No, well, we have thirty-seven something, right? Because uh, at yeah. least that's yeah. But so I'm saying, are we going to be moving ten out of there? Do you think? I guess what I'm getting at is that's another place you can cut it. Out of where? The reserve fund. Um, so which article we you're, you're, you're better at math than I am, Bob, for percentages. If I take out, how much do I need to take out of the 150 to get it to the 3.5%? <laughs> so you can give well, me a number so we can vote that today. Well, if we want this to be 3.71 into 3.5, mm -hmm. we would have to take out 0.21%, right? Which is, uh, you know, the, I just took... 0.21% and multiplied it by 6588331. Right? I mean, that. that so, and I, I got 13176. 13176. Okay. So, so trim it uh, from several places. I actually, I mean, if there were to be hedging a bet here, this this one I feel fairly comfortable with. And if push came to shove, I guess we could do reserve funds yes. later on, yeah. right? Yeah. I mean, 40, yeah, because we had 15,000 in the budget last year and for this year, and we haven't touched mm -hmm. it. So that's why I feel more comfortable okay. with it. I, mean, and I don't have a crystal ball. If that's the sum to get us to 3.5, mm -hmm. then add one more dollar to it and we're at 3.5. Well, 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 so I was thinking I would just take off 15 and then oh, all right. no, even that. Right. So Good. I just I just want to get to Good. the final number. So we're at 135048. Does that sound right? You're in the middle of a mathematics. Where, 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 Nothing where did that number come from? So I'm taking the online for the 433 transfer station, the 150, 150,048 
minus 15,000. I'm just having you tell me I'm correct. <laughs> it's 135,000. is the number that would go in when I redo the transfer station is 150448. 150 048. 048. Yeah. Minus 15,000. So it should be 135048. 135, 135, yeah. Okay. That's where it gets. But we need where the number is. so we can vote on what it's going to be. Okay. Perfect. All right. Thank you. And we're going to take 15,000 off of the 244155. Yeah. Well, it would also be off of the total. The, the, all, all of it. It'll look a lot better because it'll come off of the total. Operating. So it'll only be our operating will only have gone up 2,735. Uh -huh. Aren't we good? Yeah. <laughs> what? Yeah, we should get a round of applause for that, actually. <laughs> what? What? Why Especially, are you taking what, why what? Are you taking it all from one place? Why, why not because. Turn it around? Yeah, because if we if I tried to do that, I'd have to call up the spreadsheet and talk to people and figure yeah, that out. And, one, and yeah. I'm, so I'm taking it as yeah. I know this budget and I feel fairly confident that not the transfer ahead. station is now overseen by the select board. Through yeah, 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 of course. So knock the reserve fund back 5,000. Oh, you no, know, we're thought as Roy, if we go over that, then we can go, we can go to the reserve fund just in case there's no, in case we're under. And since I have not had to spend it this fiscal year, we had fifteen thousand dollars in there. I'm just Sorry. hoping, yeah, I'm hoping that we'll have enough to cut. Sounds like a plan. Yeah. All right. Any other? Are there any further thoughts or discussion? Um. Uh, I am confused um, uh, about from how many places are we having the fixing the budget? Just one, to be honest. Well, we're one. Right of That's the transfer station, the operating budget, 150,048. We're going to subtract 15,000. The, the line 330 for the Votech school, the it other technical up. schools, what went, went up quite a bit. Yeah. It went up about mm -hmm. 13,000, so now mm -hmm. we're taking that from somewhere else in the budget. Yeah. And that's, you know, a whole other, was that's for two kids at Smith? Correct. Yeah. Yep. And it may be possible for us to do something different with transportation. I will be definitely looking into that. Yeah. yeah. So that'd be good too. Yes. So that's so the changes are in those in the three thirty section of uh, department of Article Two and in the one four thirty three 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 and three thirty are the departments in Article Two that changed since we last spoke about this. Right, but we're not changing. We're not changing. I mean, we're not. We're not, we're not taking money from three. Right. From, no. From the textbook. Right. We're right. just cutting back. On yes. Four, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So we still have to vote on both those articles, right? Or those lines. Yeah. Well, I think both. Well, we'll just vote to approve article two. Yes. With the amendments. With the amendments. So, I, so I'm going to make a motion for the finance committee that we approve article two with the uh, amendment of. Item budget department number 433, the transportation, we're going to approve the operating budget at $135,048. Anyone care to second? Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 We have three carries three out. All right. And for the select board, motion to approve the new amended Article 2 of the town warrant. For Saturday, June 4th, 2022. Okay. All in favor? Aye. And I, it's unanimous. Right. So, um, if we're done revising the warrant, then we need to vote to close the warrant again. So, um, <laughs> motion to now close the warrant, hopefully, for good. Um, Absent new information 
coming to light in the next day or two, it will be for good. It's going to the printer tomorrow, yeah, so, so it have to be yeah, <laughs> 8 a.m. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I'll second that motion. Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Unanimous. The warrant is now closed. And I'd like to thank Veronique for your first budget. Good yeah. job. Yeah. Good job. Well, we'll know next year. <laughs> no, we'll know, we'll know June 4th. That's right. No, on June 4th. Yeah, you get instant feedback on this. Right. Right. Three um, o'clock. <laughs> yeah, you get feedback from all over on this. <laughs> yeah. uh, Phil, if I'm right, that the percentage is 3.48. See, I'm sure you're right. So that's right. good. Front page news. <laughs> Just yeah. Well, I like I like the whole. I think I think I, I like operating budget. Uh, operating budget without schools goes up zero point zero 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 one percent or something like that. I mean, yeah. Yeah. That's which is which is really. Those are the costs that are directly in our control. Mm -hmm. And we've done a really good job by this yep. budget in managing them. Yep. So that includes uh, giving people payrolls. It, it, which is a significant thing. That is and, amazing. And, and 3% 3, 3 is something that we can be proud of because we don't do that very often. And um, I still remember the look on everybody's faces when we said it's going to be no races for you this year. <laughs> <sighs> um, We'll see what yeah. next year brings. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, we had no idea what was going to happen that year. No, I know. It, it was it was we were really we, astounding when when and 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 then it makes perfect sense as to what happened. Yeah, that everybody paid their taxes. Yeah, but we really were worried. Oh, I, as to whether everybody... I remember seeing those Mima things that you uh, Desi did, whatever the um, oh, so saying pre prepare budgets yeah, for right. twenty percent right. loss of revenue. Right. 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 Mm -hmm. Like yeah. That was an ugly, ugly yeah. budget cycle. So let's hope, let's hope for the best. But yeah, I think I think that more this stable is, times. This is something that we can, this is something that is basically as good as we can really make it. I think so. And I'm grateful for the transportation donation. So if two of the towns had their town meeting so far. Uh yeah, Sunderland had their town meeting. No, that was a special. Oh, 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 yeah. That, uh, I think Deerfield had their time. No, that was a special. They were, oh, oh, that, they were nobody had their yeah. Nobody had their annual yet. Mm. Yeah. So we adjourn. You are. If you want thank to. You, Roy, thank you, Thank you. Thank you, okay. everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, thank all. you Veronique. Thank you, everybody. Take care. I'll see you in finance committee. See you June 4th. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully, yeah. Come to town meeting. Only <laughs> 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 yeah. so they're all alone. <laughs> um, all right. So we have a few other items on the agenda. And we'll get. We'll get. Uh, first is. The uh, um, non anticipated 48 hours in advance of the meeting, we have a request for a letter for the MVP project. This is not the one we were talking about last weekend with Roe. Last week with Roe. Was that last week? Uh, yeah. Two yeah. Weeks, I don't know. Last week was a part of that. Um, this, is, this is our proposed MVP pro, uh, grant for $341,600 grant total. And that really is a flood resiliency project. It really is river corridor planning work. Um, I hope those terms are triggers for some people. But and and who's the matching funds or the- So the that's what to put up? this is identifying what the match is. And, um, you know, one of the things that previously the MVP grant for the South River Meadow project, um, I believe at that time, that was a requirement of a 25% match. So that, that threshold has been reduced to 10%. So that's really, you know, the, the, that South River Meadow was $300,000 MVP project, but the town contributed 100,000 to CPA money. And this is 341,000 um, and the match is 34,000, but 
uh, part of that is we get credit for in, in kind staff time. And this is coming from if voted at town meeting from Article 29A. Yes. And this is something that I really hope the town supports because it it's uh the, you know when when everybody talks about the flood, the floodings that have occurred in the past, that that grid, that little tunnel that goes under Academy Hill Road right here, that is right by the ball field, the playground of the ball field. That has always been identified as the from our emergency response people as the place where the water starts to back up first. And so the study with really fancy hydrological mm -hmm. stuff, mm -hmm. scientific instruments that use math to determine the answers, uh, they, they, that's really important because that will, it, then if it shows data that says it's not sufficient, um, then that will sort of skip it, it in line to get replaced and repaired and um, open us, make us available for state. Is uh, part of the, the matching fund also the property that we're no. purchasing? It's no. not in the grant application, no. No, but that's all part of it. We, we, need, we really need that easement so yeah. that, yeah. Um, but, so that so you the, can get there. The cost of the easement is also in Article 29A. So those two together, this amount and that, you know, is pretty much where it comes from. So, and unfortunately, this came up for me anyway last minute, and the grant application is going in on May fifth. I kind of kind of went off my radar because of yeah. the budget. So, um, so, so, so that's why it was unanticipated for. So, support. so uh, it's just the letter is brief, but I'll read it to you so you know exactly what we're signing. The town, the town of Conway Select Board submits her application enthusiastically submits her application for the MVP program. $341,600 for flood resiliency project implementation and river corridor planning work, South River. Project schedule is structured over two fiscal years, fiscal year 23 and 24. Um, and the, the relevant part, the, the next paragraph is we have an article on the June 4th annual town meeting warrant, which if voted pledges in cash match in $5,150 of in-kind staff time, volunteer board member time and residence time for a total of $34,300 in match. So that's what we're phoning up. It's a total of 34,000, but of that 5,150 is an in-kind. So would that, that make 28,000 something? Um, so to, to me, we get a lot for that 28,000 and potentially bridges repair. You know, it's not just the, we I mentioned the one in Academy Hill. It also is going to do the same study for the one underneath 116. Um, and that's community so, preservation money. It's community right. preservation money, A, it doesn't it's impact tax. people's taxes. Right. Right. And B, this has the potential to actually solve the flooding, the structural flooding problems that exist. Yeah. Whereas, well, and, and whereas you couldn't really... What's that? Sorry, and see, this was money that was voted last year that wasn't spent. That's even, out yeah, doubly important, um, triply important. So, I don't know. I think the facts kind of line up to make this, to me, a no brainer. That's when I'm always the most disappointed in town meeting, <laughs> too. Like, that was, how could I? But, um, yeah, so, so hopefully we can persuade people that even if they may still have resentments about the previous project that was labeled flood resiliency, um, that people did not feel actually addressed flood resiliency um, or in a way that was worth the money that was spent. Hopefully we can still be open-minded enough to listen to this one actually as it meets the, the definitions of those terms. And so, as part of the grant um, application that's going the scope of work, there's quite a bit of community outreach and education that will be happening in this grant. You know, explaining the process, explaining the former work that was done on the Rose property, all of that. So I think the education component would be really important. Like how the owl was trying to find the charming when he was coughing. <laughs> it was just it was just showing the corner of the table. It's great. Uh, Does it look uh, down? It did look down, but it couldn't get all the way down. <laughs> um, 
No, so, that's not something we're voting on. That's just information. Well, it, well just or, or the, was it? Uh, I'll, I'll be, it? It's good to vote on it, though. Yes. I mean, uh, that you approve yeah. Phil signing the letter that's, of support. Okay. Yes. Yeah, motion to approve Phil's okay. letter of signing the support. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All in favor. Aye. It's unanimous. So is that? And okay. So um, future. So so for now. Um, I'd like to just keep scheduling for next Monday, and that if it turns out by Thursday or Wednesday, we should know that there's really no reason to meet next Monday, that we can wait another week, we'll let you know, but, but just in case we'll schedule, we'll set on the agenda right now that the next meeting is going to be May, Monday, May 9th at 6 p.m. Okay. here, but we may, not. But we may uh, postpone that until May 5th, set 16th. It looks like May 9th is going to be a warrant night. Yes, yeah, next yeah. week is the warrant yeah, night. So we may have to leave. And okay. then it might be better to skip the week yeah. after. And two weeks after is that is the pretend meeting as well. <laughs> Which traditionally we have skipped, we, we have not had a meeting on the pre town meeting night traditionally. Okay, so um, as far as that tradition going to be. So um until then motion to adjourn second all in favor aye aye, aye. aye.